promise to help each other celebrate the joys of life and to console each other. Hello. I am sorry, but I must interrupt this show. You know what it is. Hey, hey, I'm so This time, baby. Low. This time, how we do it, huh? They said we said we did. They said we said we go. They said we said we strong. They said we said we go. We say that you heard right. 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 They said we said we did. They said we said we go. They said we said strong. They said we said we go. We say that you heard right. We say that you heard right. We say that you heard right. We say that you made us wet at the seminary. I've been going so hard on my pimp shit. About to go in and buy me a wheel. And I pull that shit fresh off the dealership. I can leave you in red like an Xbox. Got me laughing at you like you red box. Got you chasing hot wheels like a matchbox. He ain't running the game and it don't stop. Super fun like I'm playing no blitz. Got you all in my sights like Red Dead Redemption. Never gonna slip on my pimp. Better get out my way, bitch. I'm on a mission. Really ain't no competition. I'm steady grilling opposition. I'm get up and ready to win. They can play it how they play. But fuck what you say. I'm getting this money to jack. Last of us like a dying breed, down the ride like a noble steed. Fatality moves, I make you bleed. That's on any game, that's on any screen. Shut up and give me your money. They said we said we so lit. Even if I take a L, we coming back just to show that we don't quit. They said we said we hit. They said we said we go. They said we said we said we said Yo, what's cracking, y'all? What is happening? Let me double check my audio levels and whatnot because I'm here so low. Yes, so low. Dolo looks like the audio is coming in just fine. What's cracking, everybody? What is happening? Thanks for coming, checking out your boy Ham Solo Zero Five Gaming here with you from the TSWS Gaming YouTube channel. Also here representing the lordsgaming.net as well. Good to see everybody up in the house right now. I see uh, uh, Jane Barnes, what's cracking? Thanks for popping through. Uh, Stanley Francois, and of course, Tombo901 coming in with the first, first, first. So let me go ahead and click on yours. Show you up on the screen a little bit first. I uh, appreciate you guys for stopping through and being active in the chat. Those of you that are not active in the chat, I appreciate you for just pulling up. Make yourself, make sure you got yourself a little lunch together because I know it's around uh, 1230, you know, Midwest time. You know, I call, we, me and uh, K Mega call it the Lord's time, but you know, um, and you know, 130 for y'all out in the East. Uh, I guess it's closer to, to two o'clock, but. But anyways, um, it's good to see you guys. I just decided to pop on and do a little show early. Um, I'm going to be having an episode of Behind Them Sticks a little bit later with our boy Link. Let me go ahead and actually put that stuff up on the screen. I might as well start sharing stuff that's popping. and Because uh, I, I got some stuff to talk about. And it's not just, you know, just packs and some, you know... Things I just want to show you real quick on 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 here. There's actually I just want to actually talk about like you know what's been kind of going on with Xbox as of, as of recently. Uh, I wish there was something I could talk about with PlayStation right now, but there's not a whole lot other than I'm really looking to see what's kind of going on with their VR going to PC. But there's been quite a bit of talks about Xbox and their whole PC. Um, you, you know, they're called migration to PC or whatnot, or possible Steam and stuff like that. But we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, as I said, first of all, I just wanted to shout out Link and let and, and let you guys know that um, I'm definitely going to be having him on the show behind them six a little bit later. I'm trying to get it to share the screen. Um, and I got I got a couple other people that I'm pretty excited and looking forward to shouting out and having on uh, here in the near future. But yeah, there's a there, there's a recent post that I just had earlier. Let me hide my messages. Private stuff. No, I'm just kidding. It ain't that private. It's pretty uh, it's pretty just regular stuff. Just hitting people up, saying what's up, or seeing if they want to be on the show and whatnot, or giving them information for it. But anyways. As you guys can see here, I had a post yesterday saying uh, back from PAX East uh, 2024 and ready to continue to do uh, ready to continue what I like to do, which is interview. 
uh, a little tongue twister right there. Uh, help me welcome Link to the Past to the TSWS Gaming Community by joining us at 8 p.m. EST tomorrow to learn about, which is today now, uh, which is learning about his gaming history, where he came from, and everything like that. Uh, uh, I still have that post up. If you guys want to go through Twitter and share that out, that'd be dope. If you ain't got time for that, that's cool. Uh, just make sure that you guys come back through and watch the show a little bit later to the night. Um, a dope person that I have coming on, and I'm just going to hide the screen real quick because I'm going to go into my messages and just bring him up on the screen. Um, I'm, I believe he's going to be doing an interview later on today, but, you know, I like to do you know, interviews my way and whatnot. So it's cool if people interview on other channels and whatnot because they ain't going to talk about all the same stuff that I talk about on my channel. But um, they got this brother showing up on um, the Black Vikings channel a little bit later today. Um, um, I, yeah. Abukar uh, Salim, he is the, uh, he's like the head guy that's working on the game Zao. Um uh, Zal uh, Tales of Kenzera is how it specifically goes, and that game looks pretty hot. Uh, looks really ambitious for a person's first game. Um, but he's also been the likes of Assassin's Creed and whatnot. So he's he he has he has a history of being around and within gaming. He's nothing new to it but um i definitely want to interview him and see what, what what it's all about he actually hit me back today and said yo let's get it going he said uh told me to send him my email address so i did that and he said he'll email me after he gets uh after his flight gets in or something like that. i don't know um but um i'm gonna be interviewing him in the near future so i'm pretty excited about that I'm also excited about, I'm going to throw this off the screen again for one more time because I, I I got some other people that I'm pretty excited to look forward to. Um, another brother that I hope to get interviewed, but we just have to kind of figure out a time because he's pretty busy as of lately, but I'm looking to do it, is the brother that just got 20K subscribers on his YouTube channel. Shout out to Al Alberthian. Uh, I probably chopped up saying that because I've I've tried to say it in I don't know how many different type of ways. Um, Albertium, I, 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 I think it's how it's properly pronounced. Um, but I ran into this cat from Loke, actually, and was checking out some of his stuff. He has good content. He has really good content and whatnot. So definitely make sure you check him out. I'm going to be having an interview with him in the future here in about i'm hoping about within a month or whatnot but i just want to make sure that he's good to go and whatnot i don't want to have somebody come up on the channel and you know they they, they feel like they got to rush or, or do, do whatever and whatnot and then one other person that i wanted to kind of point out or one other group of people i should better yet say that i want to point out that's going to be coming on to behind them six in the near future is I've been in contact with the Dune awakening people. And I tell you what, it's been pretty dope. It's been pretty dope talking back and forth with them and whatnot. Um, Mr. Uh, Tomas, uh, I met him at um, this last PAX. And he's an influencer manager over at Funcom, which they're uh, the ones responsible for getting out the game Dune Awakening. And man, that joint looks extra hot. I'm going to be putting together a little something, something for uh, the for Iron Lords. Uh, excuse me, for the Lords of Gaming dot net. Iron Lords, Lords of Gaming. Yeah, similar, similar enough. But anyways, um. I'm going to be putting something together, I believe, for them here soon. And I'll definitely be providing my channel with a little bit of of, um, of content as well. <laughs> it should be fun. This game looks super nuts, though, with Dune. Like, I don't even know. But check out, they also got Metal Hellsinger, which they're, you know, the guys behind that game as well. And... That game's coming, as you can see right here, to MetaQuest 2 uh, and 3 and Pro, PlayStation VR, and Steam. 
So there is something to look forward to. If you've never played their games, they've got some pretty good stuff over there. So definitely check out Funcom. Really good dudes over there as well. And ladies. And ladies, because I met a couple of ladies over there um, that work over at Funcom. Really just nice people. Really nice people. All right, but moving on, moving on, moving on. So, um, anyway, so first, what I wanted to talk about is a little bit of my time at PAX. Like, I got to see some pretty cool games. Uh, I'm going to show off a little bit of some of the games um, because it's not a big deal. But um, And and I'll talk about them very briefly, but I'm actually going to put together an actual video for each thing each game that kind of went down and whatnot and just so it's kind of a better showing especially for those people that don't want to sit here for an hour plus trying to figure out everything that's kind of went on in case you want just something like five ten minutes long i'm going to make some videos for that for sure but uh shout out to sir x man with a two dollar super chat saying uh iron lord ham solo a superstar now facts you keep repeating that brother you keep saying that, and you know I'm not going to tell you to shut up. I'm not going to tell you to shut up because you know if you promote me in a good light around some good people like the Iron Lords, then you know what I'm going to fall back and let you do your thing, man. It doesn't bother me at all to do that. Um, but just know that it all started at TSWS Gaming Massage Boy doing his dang thing. But shout out to some of those folks that rolled in as well that I didn't get the name yet. So. Silent Cypher was cracking a legendary Yobi getting that I the, uh, the 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 young Ice Cube Jr. Man, come on, man. That that man is acting like he don't see nothing, man. Keep pushing, keep pushing, brother Yobi. Keep pushing. Um, was it a uh, sour blow? What's cracking? Good to see you, brother. Um, you guys had you and Silent Cypher, Crazy Louie, Plume, all y'all had a great show last night. Uh, that was fun to watch. I watched it until I crashed out, actually. <laughs> but uh, Void Lock, what's cracking? Um, uh, I already said, what's up to Sir X, man? Read a super chat. Shout out to Sanctus Temple. Good to see you up in the chat, girl. Um, Ice Cold, good to see you as well. Casino, Big Mad Mo. I appreciate, guys, I appreciate all you guys so much. Make sure you share this out. Um, if you're new to the channel, which I know a lot of the people that I've just read on the side here, they're not new to the channel, but if you are hit that, uh, subscribe button, make sure you come back and check out some other shows as well as the one that I'm currently on right now doing with you on the fly. Let's get it. But anyways, uh, let me gather my breath real quick and throw on a little video. Um, let me bust it out real quick. So the first thing that I want to show you guys that I got done seeing at PAX, and I'm not even going to play the, I'm not going to play like the interview with me talking to the person, but I will play a little bit of the gameplay if I can find it in particular. Um, make the extra large icons because my eyes stink. But um, let's see if I can find a little bit of that gameplay in particular. Uh, I'm looking for, and this might be it. I'm just going to go on and see if, yeah, so, so, yeah, I did this interview. This guy right here on the screen that I'm talking to, really dope brother right there. His name's Ivan. Uh, me and him talked quite a bit, actually. We actually talked, he is the first person I ever interviewed at PAX, which is the first person I've ever, ever interviewed for a video game um in person and i made sure to tell him that and he made sure to give me some little nifty gifties as i left um very nice dude um and he's and if you look at his shirt he's actually working uh helping working on that game as well so enter the chronosphere which i'll be bringing up on the screen and showing you guys a little taste of that as well but here's my little game showcase of whatever games I've got done looking at. So if you're wondering uh, what kind of games I looked at, here's a little showcase of them. This is Ham Solo Showcase 2024. Uh, welcome to it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but let's go on to the gameplay. So what he's making, um, 
He actually gave me this little bottle as, as well right here. This game is called Big Boy Boxing. Um, it's very similar to something like a um, to a punch out, right? But a little bit more on the goofy side of it. So let me show you guys this game, give you the, uh, a, a chance to check it out. I'll, I'll let you listen to the audio while it's cooking and whatnot. I might be a little loud. I don't know. I didn't balance my audio until day two. So uh, it was a little wild. But uh, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and play the game. You can see the back of my fat neck. Let's go. Oh, why Why did it go at the beginning? All right. Let's go back. So it's so they got their transformations in this as well, which is. Right. And I guess so you can get it. hear me while I uh, get frustrated. <laughs> oh, dang it. Come on. So he now. actually held the camera button. for me. He's very, right, he's so very can, proud of this. So you game. can use the triggers or the buttons, which to. is pretty cool. So you can like use either the actual buttons, the X or Y, and, bow, bow, or bow, like, bow, the, you bow, know, bow, the, the, the face buttons to punch. But you could also use the, the triggers. So I was using the, you know, LB and RB. To hit all right now and see, then you now, can see, lean this is with the part the, i was just talking either about either the bottom trigger this, so that, that, that ain't in the normal right punch out right there y'all you can lean with that's the, something else you know this the, is the ice cold killer right now the analogs you see the transformation oh, right snap. there give him that iron fist yeah you trying the new bus uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna try to, you know what, I'm gonna step it up a little bit. I ain't yeah, gonna see, go, because this, this, this is the dude right, this right is, here. I'm just, I ain't Yeah, I tried him uh, before. I, I, I'm I gonna go down just a couple back. Thing, let's let, let, let's kind of cut it right in the middle with that one right there. I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna get worked. Got a little cut scene right here. This is kind of cool. Yeah, they got little cut scenes. It's a little goofy game. Love the name, Cousin Skank. <laughs> Yeah, dude's name is Cousin Hank Skank. And Cousin Skank. <laughs> cousin Hank and Cousin Skank. Oh, oh man, he's see, like, see, this game is foul though. Sometimes, cause you gotta be on, you gotta be watching. You gotta be watching because you get, you get, if you get hit three times, the match is over. The match is cooked. You're done. All right. Um, but like, look at the, right at the beginning of the fight. Right at the beginning of the fight. Bro, oh, oh right man, right he's starting. Yo! Oh, right <laughs> Coach Skank is this, this, yeah, Lee. I hurt. was doing it wrong this whole time. So you see uh -oh. that. Uh, oh, I bet I got to slap him on the butt. <laughs> I bet I got to hit his booty. Got to whoop oh, his butt. Man. Yeah, got to hit Come his Come on, man, turn no, around. So, so when you get the yellow flashes, you get these little lightning bolts oh, that help you get yo. specials. Um,. Getting, but you can oh also, man, you know, just like punch anywhere. out, you hold up, you can punch towards the base, let go, you punch in the body. I wasn't paying any Yo. attention right here, All right. or I wasn't doing very one, good right one here. One more time, and one I more time. I was one supposed more, to be punching the base one more roll. the entire time. I ended up beating oh, him before I left man, the stand. Off but getting... that first punch right there, I wasn't ready for for like the first five fights. <laughs> After a few fights, I, I, yeah, like, I... I was, oh, oh, there it is. Man. Oh, man. I had to stop getting cooked. And yeah, right here, I was just flat out confused. I didn't know that I could you know, around, push so up and go to the base. And look at bro holding the camera, just watching, let me go through it. Man, this this developer oh, cold as man. ice. He cold. <laughs> he was probably thinking, man, this dude don't play nothing. Until I showed up later on beating him. Cause, cause I, I tossed his ass a little bit later. Oh, man. But I was, I was I was getting tossed up. That was tragic. That was not a good uh but Ivan is good. He's a good dude though. Very good dude. As you can see, there's a little Final Fantasy thing right now. Big boy boxing and where I was at. All right. So so yeah, that was like the very first game that I seen. That game I thought was extra hot, really fun. But uh let's go on ahead and check out another game that I got done doing. So um, go down to present. Large again. Um, 
let's see this the next game that i want to talk about oh y'all want to see something hot so there's this game i ran into called kill them all it was a mixture of um vampire survivors in doom and i when i'm telling you guys i thought this game looked hot i'm telling you guys i thought this game looked hot see it for yourself just i'm gonna give you a little snippet just so you guys can see what this is this is crazy right now so look at the enemies Look at that. That right there looks nuts. Um, if you're asking about the punch out game, Jeremy, uh the the big boy boxing, they 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 have plans to come to Xbox and uh and PlayStation. And even Nintendo, I believe. But there and, and here's what the sentiment was. And it's the same thing for this game right here. It's the same thing for this game right here. Almost every single developer told me that they have the plans to come out for like Xbox and PlayStation. But the main Thing that they're working on is steam so as long as you have a pc pretty much every single game that i that i show you if not every single game that i show you is going to be available on steam but i know that in particular this game called kill them all that jeremy brown's actually talking about he's talking about this game so this game in particular, I know that they scaled it for the possibility of it going on the Series S. The gentleman that I interviewed that's working on this game that told me to hit him up and let him know everything when I'm talking about the game and whatnot, he told me that they got it scaled to where they can have up to 10,000 enemies at a time. And... um this game will work for any graphics card from uh like uh 2050 on up and he said the reason that he chose 2050 on up is because that's where about the series s lies in in uh gpu power okay so so yeah Make sure y'all check that out. This game, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sir X-Men kind of kind of nailed it. He says looks like an extreme World War Z uh game. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Except it's like more of a Doom universe instead of like because World War Z was zombies, right? Uh zombies with people, and you guys were like trying to like escape a mall or something like that. Like, like, like World War Z was nuts. And it looked really cool with all the enemies and stuff like that, them rushing and stuff like that. But this game seems a little bit more my speed. And it has that kind of doom aspect of jumping and running. And then they got the auto turrets firing stuff. So, like, yeah, just look at it real quick. And then there's there right there is like the vampire survivor element for this game, right? So you get to choose between different, you know, things um, after you get so many of the coins that are on the ground. So that's the vampire survivor element that I was talking about at the beginning. Um, you pick up all those orbs and then after so much you level up, you get to pick whichever one or we, we either in this particular situation, you get the increased weapon damage, grenade throw. Um, I'm assuming it does some sort of better version of the grenade throw or whatnot, or increase your health. Um, and then you get right back to it. Get right back to killing more enemies and whatnot. And one of the cool things that he said about this um, is, as you can see, enemies are dead laying on the ground. They do not go away. 
So you'll eventually, and this is how I assume it, you'll eventually be walking on enemies everywhere. They don't despawn. And that sounds insane. That sounds insane. So I'll give you like 10 more seconds of that before I take it off. Because like I said, this is just a little tease. This is a little, just, just a little taste of it. I talked about some very important stuff with that gentleman when it came to this game and whatnot. And it, it, it just looks wild. It looks wild. It looks fun. It looks something that I can just kind of turn off my brain and just get a lot of satisfaction. Get, get a lot of satisfactory from right so y'all make sure y'all check that out that game's called kill them all it's coming out i believe next year um make sure you just check out the interview you'll you'll get more details but anyways let's go on to another game and while i'm getting that set up i'll throw Dr- dragon's dogma back up just so you have something to look at So just uh, bear with me for a quick second. All right. So a game that I traditionally don't really get into, which is a tactical game, right? And yeah, just tactical games, for the most part, for me, just aren't my jam that much. But this game in particular was, was really fun. And it just so happened to be made by the same crew that I was talking about with Ivan and whatnot. So sorry for the background noise. This game, you're essentially like drawing and moving lines to move your crew. And I have this on like super fast forward right now. So if I actually go to this video, it's actually the correct speed. So you can kind of see i'm gonna just kind of zoom through because like i said this is just a little teaser but yeah you can kind of see the speed of it more or less this is i'm trying to get to a spot where we're gonna kind of fight yeah all right so oh i went to the end all right cool so now you can kind of see it so you draw your actual defense area so in in I know it's not really showing too well on the side because my camera only got to the edge of the table, the edge of the table and could only be so wide and get everything on the screen. But there's these options on the side over here that you pick, you know, your different groups of, you know, soldiers that you're using within the fight. And then I just got to the point in the game where it allows you to do aerial attacks or like weather attacks or something like that against your enemies. And I just thought this game was kind of neat, chill, pretty simple. All you really got to do is use the mouse for the most part to do 90% of the work. And, you know, you use a little bit of the WAS, uh, ASD, just a little bit, but not an extreme amount. And if it, and for people that aren't into tactical games like myself, I thought this was a nice, easy, game to kind of get into the tutorial which is this right here this is all tutorial super fun they really kind of get you into it properly i felt like in the tutorial i got cooked right here i got absolutely cooked but that's why so i like, like i said i was having a good time so i went back and i did it again because i got cooked and i was like it, it, it ain't no fucking way ain't no way i'm gonna let that go down like that so i did the exact same thing but i I started to understand what I was doing. As you can see, running around doing my thing. Yeah. Killing suckers in different areas. I still don't quite understand it all, but I was able to kind of pick it up in like 10 minutes and and, and, and have a good time with it and play it. Uh, So I could see myself like after like an hour or so being into this game, I could really see myself getting kind of dug in and playing this for, for a little bit. 
I don't I, like I don't see myself playing it as long as I play like a Dragon's Dogma or whatnot. But I definitely see myself like just relaxing and knowing that this game isn't massively huge to where it's taking up so much resources on my PC that I could probably keep it on there. And I do like to have a bunch of those kind of games to where they're super tiny or something like that. And I can just kind of keep a good stock of games on a console. Same with the Steam Deck. It's really important for that thing because that thing does not that thing does not have that much memory in it unless you throw in like an SD card with memory. But I usually keep my Windows SD card in because I don't want to lose it. So anyways, yada, yada. That is Toy Tactics for you guys. Thanks for checking that out. But now I need you guys. I absolutely need to show you guys this game. Which um, I thought was pretty fun. It is another game that's a little different um, than something I'd usually play, but it has kind of the element of like a super hot to it. Okay. Um, this game is called, it's a game that that dude was wearing the t-shirt that said enter the chronosphere on it. So this game right here is pretty interesting. Every time you move the rest of the map moves. And I thought that that, that was pretty interesting. So um, you just use pretty much the the mouse right and left stick um, ones to move, ones to shoot. And as you can see, like I move, the bullet moves, the other players move. When I stop, everything stops. So very super hot like if you've ever played super hot before. But this was a another game that I wouldn't see myself initially getting into. But after playing it, I was like, man, I could totally see myself just kind of like falling back, playing this with, just playing this with a mouse, you know, just head cocked back to the side, chilling. That's what I love doing. What's cracking, John TJ? What's good, brother? Good to see you up in here. Yeah, so just showing off a few games. Um, that I got to to talk about, or not to talk about, but I got to the, the the chance to interview the developers for it and whatnot. Um, this game was pretty dope right here. I s spent about forty minutes playing this game at the booth. So I mean, if I would have hated it, I would have got up a lot sooner than that. I wouldn't have spent that much time on it, that's for sure. But I had a good time with it. Like I said, you only it looks super duper simple, but you just use the left click on the mouse to either move or shoot, and it gets hectic. I know it looks kind of quiet and docile here, but when you get eight people trying to like shoot at you at the same time and you're trying to dodge and move and it gets wild. It gets extra wild. And this game's all about like having like good angles and stuff like that. See you see how everything's moving though? Like I'm still getting shot at and whatnot, trying to move. Yeah, it's great. It's crazy. I really enjoyed that game though. I thought it was hot. All right. And like I said, this is just a little small preview. I just wanted to show you guys. I didn't want to give off too much because I'm gonna be editing this stuff and getting them into more of a 10 minute per game kind of form uh um a formula going on but uh another game that's just like that that i didn't really think would be on my radar but ended up being a really good time was this power defense game so let me throw that up real quick This is a really short video clip, but if you know tower defense games, you're pretty much trying to stop something from entering your castle, essentially, or or whatnot. So this person kind of has a weird, different type of setup right now. Um, you collect gold by every so many seconds, and it replenishes you to be able to put down more things to stop your enemies from coming through your defenses and taking this um this chest that you kind of see the line going to 
and then from the chest the line goes into the castle in which you could get attacked in um what's cracking infinite um bro what's cracking good to see you brother good to see you um just kicking it showing off a couple of little, little little things that I, uh worked on while i was at pax um but yeah this game right here was pretty fun um but that's not me playing it. i'll show you a video of me how, how so this is how i actually have my defense is going which is not the way i had it going at first i was doing trash at this game at first don't let me fool you into thinking i understand tower defense games I, the ham solo is not gonna fraud the public right now i don't know shit about tower defense games but the dude came up to me because he's seen that i was kind of understanding it but i didn't really get like how things came together so once he sat me down and said hey this is the rate in which you get gold this is the rate or or, or this is what number one means because a lot of this stuff like if you see this number one in the bottom right corner right here there's a number one two three and a four and each of those are different defenses defense systems that you use when the game actually comes out those are going to be pictures instead of numbers right there so instead of one It'll show the picture of this actual um, defense system that you're trying to use. Um, you can sell pieces of your defenses. So if you mess up or if you decide, hey, this part isn't really getting messed with that much, I'm going to you know, move my defenses from one side of you know, the area of effect to another, you can do that through there. Um, and I just thought it was pretty cool because, like I said, I'm not into that. I'm not into these kind of games, but the ability to pick up a genre that quick, you know, like I'm only here for like fifth, like like ten or fifteen minutes. Never played your genre before. Never got into it, and I'm sitting here having a good time in that in, in, in that short amount of time. It's like the you know that um, it's 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 essentially like an elevator pitch right you get to the booth where the guy's showing off their game and they gotta you know they gotta pitch you real quick and although i'm there to enjoy and you know get video and you know show off their game and whatnot they don't know that they think i'm just you know your random guy i was walking around with you know i was just walking around with this guy this is like a grocery bag. And I had my camera in it and I had my little tripod thing in it and I had my and 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 I had Lemon's microphone in it. They had no idea that I was doing a video on them. They had no idea I was, you know, coming in with a crew unless they recognized the shirt that said Iron Lords. They had no idea. So 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 when they came up an elevator pitched me I'm not going to lie. The first elevator pitch I got for the game, I was a little confused because, like I said, I'm not into this genre. So when he was telling me stuff, I was just like, all right, all right, all right, sure, 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 sure. Sat down, played it for a little bit, realized I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> Asked a few more questions, and then, you know, they put, they, they, they put me on game, and I ended up, you know, I ended up doing the damn thing. Look at that. Look at that little setup I got. I got them forced go down this line of death i got these suckers walking in the green motherfucking miles son it was great it was great this is my second time ever playing this and um i mean the first time i played it i made like a big circle in which they had to like try to go around the circle and they were dying and stuff like that but it wasn't as effective as just like making them pretty much walk down a hallway so and get murdered. Okay, cool. So, um, so yeah, I had them walking back and forth down the same hallways, getting hit by the same things that were hitting them the first time, because that's kind of the trick. The game. You gotta try to make your defenses work more than just once towards your enemy. And I mean, shout out to Sir X Man. He said that he that he loves tower defense games uh, more than R R R RTS. And, and you know what? I think I'm kind of leaning that way with you. And I'm not mad at, at you for saying that right there because this was my first run with it and I was like, hey, this is nice. This is, 
feel them now. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, let's keep it pushing. Let's keep it pushing. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, in in, in just in case I'm I'm not sure if uh Infinite Umbra and um and uh what should we call it? What was it? Uh, and Drawn still here. I gotta keep this video up because this this joint is just so crazy. I'm gonna keep this video up because I because I want to go back and talk about it one more time before I get out of here. This game right here just looks nuts. Like, I just can't wait. I cannot wait for the Vampire Survivor Doom Doom, Doom kind of mixture game. This game looks absolutely hot. Look at, look at all them enemies. That's crazy. Anyways, yeah, I talked about that game just a little bit ago before you guys uh, strolled in. I see you, Infinite Umbra. I appreciate you, brother. Um, that game looks wild, but here's a little kind of cute, smaller game. That's made by a much smaller group of people. And by the way, that tower defense game was only made by seven people, by the way. And it's their first game. And it's supposed to be coming out, I believe, in June or July. And it's only going to be $5 for that tower defense game. Five bucks. So, best believe I'm mine. $5? For the devs and know that I've you know talked to them in person, absolutely. Five dollars. Let's get it. All right, so let me see this other game. So this game right here is I'm, I apologize because there's a lot of reflection going on and there was nothing I could really do about it. Uh, next time I'm getting the tripod, an actual tripod instead of this little desk tripod that i have that doesn't really do a whole lot when i'm in these kind of situations but anyways this game right here was pretty neat you're able to kind of make your character it's, it very much reminded me of like a zelda like a classic zelda game um it's 2d though it's it's not it's not like over the top like um like bird's eye view but let me kind of get to the game. So, as you can see, it's like a Metroid, Metroidvania game. You can kind of see me just kind of kicking back, asking questions and whatnot. Let's let's go on ahead and throw the audio in because, as I'm gonna tell you right now, when I do the actual edit, the audio won't be available. So let's get a little sneak peek of that. And see what it's all about. Usually that type of art style, people like to make it kind of jittery. Yeah. And this is like very smooth. Yeah. Do that for a second. But that's a little cute music that the game got. So you're able to, yeah, like I said, you can make your your character. I gave him, you know, I made him look like the classic game, so it gave him a little pro. Yeah, but shout out to y'all that like those old classic, uh, little classic Metroidvania right there. I'm gonna let y'all check this out real quick. My wife's calling me. I'll be right back. So yeah, you got your skill tree right there. You got your artifacts um, that you're able to kind of get <laughs> that will help you progress throughout the game. And then the map is like you have to, you know, just like Elden Ring and other games where you have to go to the spots to open up the areas of the map. So as you can see, the map looks like there's nothing there because I haven't been in. Oh, uh, Infinite, Infinite says he likes that music score on this one. Yeah, it's, it's smooth. It's 
smooth. It really gives you that old classic kind of, it's like an elegant Game Boy sound. Not that the Game Boy ain't get elegant, I'm just saying like, it's like, you know, today's, like more, more uh, quality and clarity attitude. Yeah, but you can see you got the bow and arrow. If you look, uh, you can kind of see that like, it shows you where to land, where your bow will land and whatnot. Oh uh, yeah, my camera is about to die right here. I remember that. Uh, these guys were super nice. In fact, I met these folks, right? I met them in a weird way. So I was, I was actually doing an interview with these other cats. Um, uh, what what was the name? Um, uh, the it, it was Ragdoll. It is is the Ragdog Plus game. Super dope folks over there, Ragdoll Plus. I was interviewing him, um, and you know, getting a group photo with all with, with them all, and we were just kicking it and just joking for a little bit. And this woman just came out of nowhere, and she was like, "Hey, excuse me, excuse me, Ham." She called me Ham. I was like, "What? What's up?" I looked over. I was like, "What's up? What's up? What's up?" And she was like, "Hey, can I actually come over and have you over here so you can check something out real quick?" And I was like. Check out, check out what what what's up she's like oh check out this game that that uh I, i'm not sure if it was her husband or if it was just like a close uh person but they they were a small team so it could have possibly been like a husband thing or whatnot um but he's like she was like come check out something um my guy over here is working on and i went over to go check it out it was this game right here. And the guy was, you know, he was doing his elevator pitch to me and whatnot. And so, so this whole like video, which I sat here and played this game for not even kidding for like 35, 40 minutes. I only recorded like 10 minutes. Um, but it was, but it was really charming. It was really cool listening to how excited he was about me being there to play the game. And I'm just sitting there like, like excited just to be at PAX and he's just super excited and like you know bro was really excited to show off this game and I wasn't mad about it. I was uh I was uh that's a good way to put it. I don't know, flabbergasted? I was surprised that somebody was so stoked to show off their thing. Um to somebody that wanted to record it and wanted to interview them. Because like I said, fooled me. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty chill though. It's uh reminds me a little bit of like Uden Chronicles. A little bit, just for the more or less for the Metroidvania part. Oh, that's a bird. Yeah, but there you go, you got the, the, the bow right there. Out of here. Yeah, like this, this is Alexa. All right, but that's it for that game right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop button for that. And the next one that I kind of want to talk about is, I guess I'll go with this game right here. And I feel terrible because I don't remember the name. The game the top of yeah. Oh, Wildwoods. It says it right there. Perfect. But this game right here reminds me of like Overcooked, like the teamwork aspect but this game. fighting. That's pretty cool. And you guys are like essentially doing everything. I'm gonna mute this. You're doing essentially everything that you can to keep this little cart thing moving. So I actually record way too much footage of this. Uh, not that it's a bad thing. I got a lot to choose from. But um, but my camera was like on its last leg after recording this. Um. It was warm, and it was like, yo, recharge me. <laughs> but, 
but uh but essentially so it was me and three other random or, or two other random people that i didn't know and we were playing this game and we have to restock this like stagecoach essentially wood will keep us warm and be be able to give us the ability to see um the flower that we put into the cart gives us the ability to heal if we get hurt so as you can see it's dark the enemies are starting to come out um and in and if the fire ever goes out it gets cold and our health gets affected by said thing so as you can see the lights out right now that's not good so somebody ran back up and turned back on that fire gotta keep it hot but anyways uh yeah it's good stuff right here um a, a nice little teamwork game that you can get down and play with just a few other friends and whatnot and this game is going to be online to be able to play with people uh strictly pve not pvp so you can just be able to play with homies or or random people but they'll un pretty much understand the task the task is is pretty simple but it's all about kind of staying alive and dealing with the um with the ongoing and constantly incoming threats or hordes or rounds or however you want to say it um there is an upgradable skill tree that you guys get to kind of that you guys kind of get to throw down on essentially to be able to upgrade be more stronger live throughout the wild um and beat the game essentially so i don't know i thought the game was pretty fun like i said i recorded way too much of it because i ended up sitting down and playing it for way too long but i think this would be done uh dope to be able to play with my wife and my daughter simultaneously because me and my wife could pretty much knock it out of the park and help my daughter understand at the same time what to do very similar to like i said overcook moving out like those types of games where you're kind of just working together you can do stuff on your own but you're better together Anyways, um, I think we probably got time for one more game that I wanted to talk about before I talk about some of the news before I have to get ready to get up out of here. I got about like 25 more minutes. Um, let's see. Ah, uh, screw it. I'm just going to actually save it until I do the edits. Let's actually get into the, the, the news that I wanted to talk about about today because some of this shit is nuts um it's pretty cool though at the same time so um the first thing i wanted to bring up which i'll throw on the screen here momentarily oh i guess i could just do this pow there we go so Here's something I found that was interesting, and this was part of the thumbnail as well. So if you kind of notice the thumbnail, this is part of the background on it. So it says, uh, uh, Phil Spencer's comment on PC game stores on Xbox. I'm kind of curious what you guys think about this, because I'm, I'm kind of excited to hear stuff like this. Um, the reasons I'm being excited is because it sounds like it's going to be simpler to port games. And the more that Xbox can kind of make themselves simpler to get games to, unlike how simple it is this generation where they got to, you know, they got to make the game for the Series X and they got to make it for the Series S and then they got to make it for the PC. I think Xbox is getting closer and closer and closer to just try to merge all those things. They're, tr uh, in, in my opinion, Long story short, they're going to pretty much be a PC. I mean, I know that people have been saying that kind of stuff for a while, but I don't think people really understand the magnitude of something like that. Being able to, you know, work hand in hand with Steam, hand in hand with the Epic. 
further separating you from the corner that somebody like a Sony kind of puts themselves in when they say buy only our box to, to play on only our hardware to to use only our you know peripherals on and stuff like that like they kind of cornered themselves so hard now that now that the times are changing they're kind of reaching back out and being like oh we actually need more support because we kind of pinned ourselves back into this corner so please get uh please take our vr to uh pc please take um some of our games to mobile please you know take a marathon to your xbox and stuff like that and and now it's a little late in the game and it's a little weird um but at the same time they've kind of stifled anybody that was trying to work with them prior so I, I don't know i just find that to be very very interesting and weird um but let's kind of go into the article a little bit so it says uh xbox bill uh chief bill spencer shares his wish to bring pc game uh stores to console giving players the freedom to choose where they buy their games from um and the article continues to say in uh, in another interesting revelation, Xbox head Phil Spencer has reportedly backed the arrival of third-party game stores on game consoles. This has led Xbox fans anticipating the possible launch of game stores like Steam on Microsoft console. Recently, Spencer has been sharing his thoughts about the future of Xbox, attracting the interest of the community, including a potential tease as well as hypothetical ideas about what he would want in a possible Xbox handheld device. Now he has shied the, uh, shed the light on what he thinks about having third-party stores on a console. Excuse me. In an interview with Polygon, Microsoft Game uh, Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer revealed uh, his wish to bring down um, bring down the closed ecosystem of consoles and introduce their party storefront uh such as steam epic game store and i don't know what itch.io is but it's something anyways um continuing on oh i gotta go let my wife in the door god dang it be right back Oh, sorry about that, you guys. All right, so continuing the uh, the 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 article, it says, let's see, Epic Game Store and oh yeah, itch.io to such platforms. When asked if these stores could exist on Xbox consoles in the future, he said yes, likely fueling excitement among fans. Further. He highlighted that getting to choose where a player buys their game from is an advantage. PC gaming offers over console, um, over console gaming. He said, nobody would blink twice if I said, hey, when you're using a PC, you get to decide the type of experience you have. There's real value in that. However, he also admitted that such a move would require tackling a lot of paperwork. So, in other words, probably not happening super soon, but definitely something to possibly happen down the line. Um, article further says Spencer addressed uh, how the long-running strategy of console, mark, uh, console makers which involves subsidizing or selling the hardware at a loss to eventually recoup the money and profit via software sales from their own digital library storefronts may no longer be reasonable. He added that the walls meant to lock people into consoles might motivate them to stay out. Moving on, he said that subsidizing has become more challenging and console makers 
need to look at doing away with other platform limitations, in particular the apps of third-party stores to attract players' attention. This particular freedom of storefront using, uh, excuse, excuse me, uh, storefront is also the USB of gaming PCs such as handheld devices that include the likes of Aces ROG Ally and Lenovo Legion Go. So, I'm not sure what you guys think about all that, but I, yeah, 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 so we, Sour Blow over here asking, you locked your wife out. No, no, I did not. <laughs> no, I did not. Um, we have to get a, a, a key made, uh, we have new management and they needed our one of our keys and they said that they're going to make a copy of it. And you know how slow management and stuff are about getting things together. So here it is like a week and they still haven't done it. Um, I did not lock you out. Oh my God. This woman is out of pocket. All right. Well, anyways, I guess I locked my woman out. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to make sure I'm safe. Everyone's out the house. I got to stay safe. Anyways, um, let me go on ahead and go to the next article that I kind of wanted to go over. But um, as I'm doing that, I just want to touch upon this real quick. I'm excited. The more that Xbox decides to go and lean into PC, the more you're giving me the opportunity to access things from different devices. Sounds amazing. Um, but being able to have your own device at the same time is even crazier to me. So, you know how, you know, the Walkman came out from Sony, right? The Walkman was a big deal. Sure. And if a Sony music came out and I, and you know, Michael Jackson or something like that, I'm throwing that sucker in the, in the Sony Walkman, but it's also nice. That I can take it out of the Sony Walkman, throw it in the pants on it. You know what I'm saying? Throw it into something else. It works. That's nice. And that's essentially what this is, right? You take out your CD from one CD player and you're able to put it into another one and it works. So I like that idea. I like that idea in who, where are all games pretty much going to end up being on PC? What's Xbox's problem? Missing out on games. What can you not miss out on? I mean, I mean how are you going to miss on that, miss out on games if you have storefronts on your console? You see what I'm saying? So if they have announced, oh, the next Final Fantasy is going to PlayStation and PC. <laughs> well, if Xbox has Steam, do you miss out on it? You see what I'm saying? It's it's a little diabolical what Xbox is trying to do. They're trying to say you cannot avoid us. You can keep trying to beat around the bush all you want. You can keep saying that you don't like us, but the one thing you're going to have to do is deal with us. <laughs> you're going to have to deal with us. It just is what it is. So I think that's uh I think that's really cool, but Tom Warren brought up something that was very important that I actually brought up on Monday and Tuesday on the crossover and also on the lowdown with Loke on the lowdown and the crossover with K Mega on his channel this last this last Monday. And here it is right here. I'll share it on the screen. So Tom Warren put out a post saying Diablo 4 on PC Game Pass doesn't have Xbox achievements. PC gamers, do you care about Xbox cheap? Me in particular, I, I, I do. I do care about Xbox cheap. It's I like them. To, to get that little pop, to get to, to have that little sound come out of the Xbox, I, I, I appreciate that. 
is it gonna stop like if i don't have that am i not gonna play a video game that's not how that works i'm still gonna play a game i mean i'm not an achievement chaser it really stinks for achievement chasers or however you want to put them some people say achievement whores or whatnot let's not be that derogatory though i'm gonna say achievement chasers all right so it's not good for the achievement chasers at all because um that's what they do they chase that stuff so them seeing this stuff come out to pc not that big of a deal i particularly said yes on this i'm not gonna lie and plus you can see it right here you see the one the one that's got jacked but yeah i hit that i think it's important to have them but it's not detrimental to have them i'll tell you that much and and, and there, there's a lot of people that don't really care this person said weird poll someone who doesn't use pc game pass even both vote yes so i mean i mean you you definitely got those people in there as well but whatever i mean every poll that you put on a internet site good luck having that be a hundred percent valid across the board Uh, you're gonna have those people that just say yes or no just despite the opposite but in my opinion i'd like to see them figure out like if, if you're gonna have multiple launchers on your console so if you're gonna have steam you're gonna have epic you you might have gog on there or something right like if you're gonna have all these things on there that's cool and i appreciate that and i'd rather have those on there than achievements but i would much more like to have those with achievements if that makes sense i don't think that's impossible Especially if you get a Steam achievement, I think it should be able to pop something for Xbox and be like, oh, we see you got that on Steam, and there it is for Xbox. Popped. So I really I, I, I really hope that they do continue to support Xbox achievements going forward. But if they stop it, it's not the end of the world to me. Um, as long as the games continue to come. They continue to be fly and all that jive. Yeah. But anyways, um, keeping it pushing. Let's do that. Um, let me see what else I got here on the docket, because I'm about to get off of here. I gotta go to a I didn't even actually talk about Diablo actually coming to Game Pass, which is pretty dang important itself. I'm excited to play Diablo on Game Pass. Like not like super I'm, I'm not on the edge of my seat like i was last year when the game came out but i'm excited to try it out on my pc because i i purchased the game on console and that's where i played it so i don't know what the pc experience is like so i'm i'm, I'm a little interested to check that out and see what that's all about but anyways let's move to the last topic here of today which is What's up? No, oh my goodness, woman. Get out of here. I'm going to lock this door on you, too. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, so here's the last, uh, here's the last thing I wanted to share. Because I got to get to a doctor's appointment for my back. But anyways, um, it says Phil Spencer is still, uh, pin, uh, still pinning um for an xbox handheld but some publishers are reportedly unsure if microsoft consoles are even worth it and see this kind of circles back to what i was talking about earlier if microsoft has steam and they have epic on their console then are you really developing a game for an xbox console or are you just developing it for a PC and the Xbox is figuring it out how to get it to work on their console from a PC version? I mean, do you not see that whole thing, how it circles completely around and right back at the beginning? 
where it's just like people are all talking about oh no support for xbox i don't know about xbox in the future i don't know how they can last and stuff like that and then you see one article saying hey xbox is looking to get storefronts onto their console and then you see uh this article saying some publishers are reportedly unsure if Microsoft consoles are even worth it. That's a conundrum. <laughs> that is uh, what I would call people not knowing the, what the fuck they're talking about. That's what I'd call that. As simply as that. Because if they're thinking about putting an actual launcher onto a console. Then you're not, then you, then you're right. I guess, technically they're not, the publishers are not making a game for, for the console. They're making it for the platform. That's going to have it, which would be seen. Like, it's just so, it's just so wild because then you can think about game pass even being on steam, right? You can think of them being the day one, you know, receivers of said game outside of a subscription service. They got Activision now, so they got Call of Duty, they got Overwatch, Diablo, got Bethesda now. So they got, you know, the upcoming Blade game. They got the new Elder Scrolls game coming out. Steam doesn't want to miss that. Steam doesn't want to miss any of that. Xbox just made themselves one of the, if not the biggest publisher in the world. So you don't think that other publishers and stuff like that aren't going to look at that and say, hey, they, they got quite a lot of people over there. Let's just ignore them. Yeah, no, they're not doing that. They're trying to get paid, son. They're trying to get paid. Let me go to the chat and see what's cracking over here. I haven't read anybody's chat, like, pretty much the entire time that I've been here. So let me pay some respects to the chat before I decide to get up out of here. Um, Because, I mean, I can tell you right now. And I said this last night on See Money's show. I hope that they come out with this handheld. You know, I hope that they come out with it before they come out with another, like, mainstream kind of console. Just to be able to shed some light on it, uh, on, on, on this newer handheld, and give it its time in the sun without overshadowing it with something else and saying, hey, everybody, just buy. Just just buy. You know, it doesn't have to make sense. Just buy. Like, I want people to easily understand what they're being able to get themselves into be able to compare and contrast hey i'd rather get this handheld or hey i'd rather get the xbox handheld because i'm sure there'll still be handhelds that are stronger than the xbox one but the xbox one should be kind of a a kind of a you know center for most um for most of these handheld companies to go to uh to go to when it comes to developing um handhelds for games um but anyways richie in the chat a while ago says uh uh he says if you don't know itch io you hate any developers that is not true i just don't know i mean i don't know every single name and acronym and all these others it's all good i ain't worried about it you disrespectful son of a bitch anyways um Sir X Man saying I, I've always wanted uh, Steam on my Xbox. I am mad about that. Um, uh, Itch.io is the best way to support indie devs. Learn something every day. Uh, Ray Chi says uh, CS:GO, or he's talking to Sir X Man. Says CS:GO veteran. Are we getting uh, fresh meat? Oh shit! Yeah, I see what you say. <laughs> and, and you got to think about that in other ways too, right? So. Uh, this whole Aura game, right? Aura st Story Untold or something like that. That's supposed to be like a PC exclusive. Well, if Xbox is becoming more of just a PC, 
instead of just a specific game console. It's becoming more of a PC that has the ability to have a launcher like a Steam and stuff like that. And it has the ability to, you know, plug in a keyboard, whether it's wireless or, or, or wired or whatnot, and be able to play on it. You got aura on your Xbox now. When they said it wasn't a console game, now it is. My whole question is, at the end of the day, and this is like my like billion dollar question, is how are they going to, if they do decide to make Xbox into like a PC, essentially, how are you going to allow me to still play the games I own console version? Um, is that something that's going to carry over? Is it something like the PS, you know, three to PS four where it's like, see you later, um, get all your stuff on the new console and ditch, ditch the old, which I highly doubt. Um, yeah. It will, what, what's it going to mean for backwards compatibility games that are not even available on PC that I have on my Xbox right now? This brings a lot of questions to the table. And I don't think that's bad. I think that's a good thing. We need to understand what the hell we're kind of getting ourselves into before we throw our money at it. So I think that's the most reasonable way to go about it, in my opinion. Um, Sir x then says, um, there are some games on Steam that never came to console. Uh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. The exact opposite of what I just got done saying. I said there's some games that are on console that never came to PC, but there is definitely way more games on PC that never made it to console. Um, Sour Blue's worried for my safety. I appreciate it. Um, Ham is protecting those cheeks. Yo. I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> Uh, Linus, uh, uh, Richie says Linus Tech Tech has a video where they bought a PC with the uh, Xbox APU. Um, that's interesting. How did that video end up going? Um, Sapo says, um, I understand why, uh, I understand why Bobby, uh, why Phil, uh, isn't waiting for Game Pass to hit its stride if Game Pass is going to be a subscription service x cloud should be everywhere netflix apple tv hulu and peacock um sapo continues to say wherever there is a streaming service xbox should partner with them a hundred percent big time and i mean xbox should partner with verizon to make a mobile sim card chip for their for their handheld that comes out so you could just be using it and be on cell phone data if you want to. I think that would be brilliant. That would be super smart. Team up with Verizon or T-Mobile or something. I mean, I'd say, I'd say Verizon, uh, just because they've had a relationship with Verizon for a while. If you remember seeing the Series S and stuff like that available for it and whatnot. <laughs> <clears throat> But anyways, um, uh, Back from the Dead said, um, I like achievements. You earn uh, naturally grindy ones. Or, or, or he says, or ones you have to go out of your way um, are obnoxious. Yeah, like the Gears of War one. That one's crazy obnoxious. Crazy obnoxious. Um, Zappo continues saying, and if a customer wants the native experience, make them buy an xbox don't send the game to other platforms i mean i don't disagree with you on that one but you know mega core corporations are making mega decisions and that's out of my mega you know pocket <laughs> which i don't have a mega pocket i have the small pocket i got a pocket that i can deal with and and take uh and get video game consoles and stuff like that with i don't have a multi-million dollar pocket that'd be a phenomenal maybe someday but it ain't today i tell you that much 
Um, Sapo continues to say, uh, Matt, uh, I'm mad. I'm kind of mad about it. Just got Dragon's Dogma. No, I, uh, I'm assuming you're saying now I got to quit because Diablo is. <laughs> Oh, man, too many games. That's not a problem. That's not a real problem, right? Um, let's see. What is the rest of somebody saying? All right, you guys. I'm sorry, but I got to cut this. I got to get up out of here. I appreciate everybody that stopped through. I appreciate the... The one super chat I got from Sir X Man, I appreciate that. Remember, you guys, those super chats are available. You can support your boy so I can keep going to these events and stuff like that. That's how I got to PAX in the first place. So I didn't get flown out by the Iron Lords or nothing like that. They they hooked me up with a with the ability to get in the building, but I had to pay for everything else, and that came from folks like yourselves that helped your boy out. Um, you know, w- 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 with the channel and whatnot, I was able to, you know, get so much money to co- collect it together from from your guys' support and whatnot. And I was able to bring you guys new content and stuff like that. So continue to support. Hopefully you uh, in- enjoy the stuff that I'm going to be putting out here in the near future. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode of um, whatever this show is called. I just, I'm just calling it Let's Chat. Screw it. Because that's what we did. We just chatted about what, what's been kind of going down lately and my recent uh, visit to Boston for PAX. But I appreciate all of you guys for pulling up. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure that you show up later on this evening. Remember, I said 8 o'clock Eastern. I am going to be having Link come through for an episode of Behind Them Sticks. So make sure you come through. Support your boy. This is your boy, Ham Solo 05 Gaming from the TSWS Gaming YouTube channel. Letting you know to keep it gaming or keep it moving. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the day, and I hope to see you a little bit later. Peace.